On behalf of the House Democratic Caucus, I want to thank all the members of the press corps for uh, joining us today as we come to talk about um, the, the, the failure of the cigarette tax increase on the floor of the House of Representatives. Um, our caucus has said from the very beginning uh, that a cigarette tax, a standalone cigarette tax package, was a Band-Aid on a, on a bullet hole. Uh, we've got about a $900 million to a $1.1 billion budget shortfall that's going to take more than $180 million cigarette tax um, to fill. If we really care about public education, public health care, public safety, and public transportation in the state of Oklahoma, it's going to take more than the cigarette tax. And so our caucus has said all along that in order to get all of our support for the cigarette tax vote, uh, the, the House Republicans would have to bring uh, additional revenue to the table to help shore up the budget to protect those people that we as, as, as elected officials care about, our children, our seniors, our veterans, uh, and the like. Today what you saw was an attempt by the House Republicans just to throw up a bill as a standalone measure, hoping that it would pass. I heard that the Speaker of the House decided to, um, uh, to cast blame on the House Democratic Caucus. I want to make this comment. The Speaker must be either bad at math or bad at leadership when 21 members of his caucus versus the 14 members of my caucus actually opposed the legislation. Um, all the Speaker needed was 10 additional votes to get the cigarette tax passed. He had 21 members who either chose to vote no or chose not to vote at all. Uh, and th these are members uh, to whom he has granted chairmanships, had their bills heard on the floor of the House of Representatives, given them the nicest offices in the building. And don't forget, they're also the same members who voted for him for Speaker of the House. If he can't convince 10 of those 21 naysayers to support the cigarette tax, I assure you that the, that the, the, uh, the responsibility for the failure of the cigarette tax vote today lies at the, leader's, uh, the, the Speaker's feet. Um, it, to, for him to turn around and say that it was our fault when 14 of our members voted no versus 21 of his is, um, is laughable. And so with better leadership and better math skills, I think we'd be in a different situation. Now, mind you, our caucus firmly believes that if the, if the majority party would offer up a gross production tax increase, which, this, which the public, the people of the state of Oklahoma absolutely support, as a way to, to, to join um, with the cigarette tax to bring in five to six hundred million dollars worth of revenue, then our caucus will uniformly support the cigarette tax. But as we stand here today, what you saw on the floor of the House of Representatives was a bill that he knew would fail. Um, knew it wouldn't get enough votes from his own caucus members because he couldn't convince them uh, to support it. Uh, when, the, when the final notes on this, on this day are written, it should be noted that of the 14 members of the House Democratic Caucus that opposed the legislation, we did so on principle because we know that it's going to take more than a cigarette tax vote um, to balance the budget. The 21 members of the House Republican Caucus who voted no, voted no because they want to see a, a budget failure in the state of Oklahoma. They don't want to see any revenue raised. They want to see more cuts to public education, more cuts to public health, more cuts uh, to our roads and bridges. And so we're standing on principle, they're standing on politics, and, and our plan is to continue to work with the majority caucus uh, to find uh, the additional revenue sources necessary to balance this budget uh, that go much farther beyond just a cigarette tax band-aid for the state's budget. The governor said that she will not sign a budget that has 14 percent across the board uh, cuts. The, the House Majority Party and the Republicans in the Senate desperately need revenue and they need our votes to get there. And so if they're going to raise revenue, we've told them over and over again, you can't raise revenue exclusively on the backs of middle class families. We heard the Senate Republicans today offered up a gas tax again. <coughs> thankful, we're thankful for the Speaker of the House for saying that that, is a, that issue is dead on arrival in the the State House. There is no way, shape, or form that our caucus is going to vote for a gas tax increase and a cigarette tax increase while the majority party leaves income taxes and gross production taxes for the wealthiest people in the state of Oklahoma alone. It is, uh, it's immoral to try to balance this budget on the backs of middle class families and we firmly believe that at the end of the day the, the majority party and the governor will come to us seeking our support for a cigarette tax and then, then negotiate with us around a gross production tax increase to, tr to truly balance the budget. And so we think we are more likely, uh, we, we are closer to a gross production tax um, agreement than we were just a few hours ago. And I asked the Speaker of the House who told us over and over again that all options are on the table. He put a cigarette tax on the, on the floor today for a vote that he knew wouldn't, wouldn't pass because he had 30% he had, um, of his own caucus that were, that were opposing it. Um, if he knew that was going to fail but chose to put it on the board anyway, we ask that, uh, uh, that he do go ahead and do the same thing for the, for the gross production tax because we are confident that if the gross production tax were put on the floor of the House of Representatives, at least 51 members of, our, of, of, of the, the House and uh, Democrat and Republican caucuses would support it. I'm certain the Republican Party could offer up many ideas that would help shore up the budget hole by raising taxes on middle class families. But if they're going to, if that's going to be their only solution, then our caucus is going to oppose it. And so just because they found, they could, they could turn around and today and tomorrow and say we're going to tax, uh, raise income taxes on veterans if that's what they want to do. And that would certainly go certain ways to help closing the gap. But we would oppose that as well. They're just fiscally irresponsible decisions as a standalone measure. So uh, understand. 
hospitals, 12 of them in the state of Oklahoma, have filed bankruptcy or, or closed in the last six years. Schools are down to four-day school weeks in one-fifth of our school districts. We've got 2,000 fewer teachers in the state of Oklahoma than we had just a few years ago, and that's not because cigarettes are too cheap. Understand that. The people of Oklahoma need to understand that we're in this mess not because cigarettes are too cheap. We're in this mess because of gross production tax cuts, income tax cuts, and tax credits and giveaways to the wealthiest and most powerful people in the history of the state of Oklahoma. And as they try to, as they try to correct for their fiscally irresponsible mistakes, they cannot do that by raising taxes on the backs of middle class families. So we will help them with the cigarette tax. And we did help them today. Make no mistake about it, they have 72 members. They only needed four of our votes. We offered four times as many votes as they needed from our caucus to pass it. If, they, if their caucus truly believed that this was the resolution necessary to, to, to solve all the budget problems in the state of Oklahoma, they had four times as many votes as they needed from our caucus to get it done. But because of their leadership and their inability to count heads, they couldn't get it done. So at the end of the day, our caucus is willing to work with them. We have worked with them. We have put, plan, we put our Restoring Oklahoma plan on the table. And if I hear the, the, the Daily Oklahoma and Dale, or if I hear another House Republican member say, well, why won't the Democratic caucus support the, the cigarette tax? It's in their Restoring Oklahoma plan. Make no mistake about it. We said when we rolled it out that the cigarette tax was the Republicans' idea to raise taxes on middle class families. And the only way we would support it was if they increased the gross production tax or restored those income tax cuts on wealthy families. It's got to be a part of an overall package. It was never a standalone measure. We told them that they ran it as a standalone measure measure that it wouldn't pass because their caucus wouldn't support it and sure enough we were proven correct today. So budget negotiations have been a mess. When in the last week or so uh, my phone finally started ringing asking about where our caucus would stand on certain issues, um, it, it was um, in the most discombobulated way. I'd get a call from the State House Republicans and I'd get a call from the State Senate Republicans and I'd get a call from the Governor's Office and I, and I literally told them all, I said I, I can just tell you all the same thing if you just put us in the room. Right? Just, just you all get in a room and I'll sit down and we can negotiate this. I know where my caucus is and, and, and where we want to be. But instead, I'd get a call from the Senate Republicans and they'd say, well, we heard that from the House Republicans that you guys would support this or oppose that. Then I'd get the same call from the governor's office. Uh, it's just a, it's a, it's been a ridiculous process. Um, and we've, we've told them all along. They, know, they knew that they would need our votes to raise revenue, in particular if they wanted to raise revenue on the backs of middle class families. And uh, we waited for that realization to sink in. And it wasn't until the last four or five days that it did, and they started contacting us asking for our help. But unfortunately, and this is the unfortunate part, the only solutions they've offered up to solving the state's budget problems are raising taxes on middle class families. So, they, so the Senate today is offering up a cigarette tax and a gas tax increase. The House Republicans in a few minutes in, the, in, in JCAB are going to offer up an increase on, on, on our cable bills. Understand, we're not in this mess because it's, it, gas prices are too cheap, cigarettes are too cheap, and cable's too inexpensive. Lord knows anybody that's got a cable bill knows it's not, right? We're in this mess because of a billion and a half dollars worth of income tax cuts, two billion dollars worth of tax credits and exemptions, and the most generous gross production tax cuts of any major oil and gas producing state in the nation. And we cannot solve this $1.1 billion budget hole without addressing those problems that put us here in the first place.